I want to let I want to say hello to everybody first of all, and I'm here with my good friend Cam Batley, Chief Corporate Officer of Aurora. Aurora Cannabis. Aurora Cannabis. Yeah, that's right. As, as if there was any need for, for that, <laughs> but we're sitting here, we're standing here in Aurora Skies, mm -hmm. brand new ultra high tech facility, and I got to tell you, I have never seen anything like this in all my days of cannabis site visits. So there is nothing like this. There is nothing like this. Nothing in the world you is like this. You guys invented this. We invented it. Yes. So this is part of you you were talking earlier about your relationship with uh, with Thomas Thomas Larson. Larson mm -hmm. from Larson Greenhouses and you ended up acquiring Thomas because you found yourself He was the best in the world. We were creating new intellectual property together. We had no choice. We had to acquire him or kill him and we decided to acquire him instead. He's probably happy about that. Yes, and we are too. So now what what is it we're growing here? Is this like uh, camphor or like tomatoes? Or? Uh, something way more valuable than that. Uh. So um, this is one of the 17 flower rooms at Aurora Sky. Each of them is identical. Each of them is 34,000 square feet. And all together, they produce over 100,000 kilograms of high quality cannabis per year. And they do it consistently and they do it at the highest production efficiency in the world. And they do it without crop loss. How much of that do I get? How much have you got in your in your wallet? Just uh, Edward, we're going to need to crank up the money making machine here again. Um, so, Cam, tell me, how long did this take, thing take to build? How much did it cost? And how does the return on investment work for the economics of Aurora? Uh, the return on investment is insane. It's about three months at full capacity. Um, the the time to build from the time we actually started construction on the physical facility was about 14 months. Hmm. Uh, and and the great thing is, and that's pretty fast for a facility like this, which is completely different from everything else out there. Remember, this is not a greenhouse. This is not a greenhouse. This is an indoor facility with a glass roof that allows us to harness the power of the sun, but we also have supplemental lighting. Uh, and we're able to ensure the optimal level of light on the canopy at all times. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the beauty of the closed system uh, with, um, and by the way, we've got MERV level 14 air filtration here, so you're currently breathing probably the cleanest air you've ever breathed. Mm. Um, is that we control all the environmental variables, all of them, from the lighting to the temperature to the humidity to the nutrients. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's part of why we get the highest production efficiency in the world out of these facilities. It's also uh, why it's so predictable, so regular, so consistent, and it's also why we don't lose crops. We're not open to the air, so uh, nasty things can't get in. Right. Um, so I want to address some of the criticisms that have been le levied at Aurora from the sort of cannabis universe that mm. we are now able to say in no uncertain terms are any of them not a single one is valid some people have said oh it's way too close to the airport the fumes from the airlines are going to make it impossible <laughs> to grow cannabis clearly not true so that's that that one i really love because uh it was actually spread by i'm told by numerous analysts it was spread by one or more of our competitors. Mm. As you can see, uh, that can't be the case. This is, uh, we have the most powerful HVAC system here that anybody's ever seen. Uh, and, and the level of air filtration is, you know, like that of a, a level four lab practically. Sure. Um, so clearly you don't have any contaminated cannabis. It's beautiful, happy, yeah. healthy cannabis plants. And we've been in multiple rooms mm. and there is all these rumors that, oh, they can only show you one room, they'll never take you through the whole place. We've been through the whole place, we've been in almost every room, I don't know if it was 17, but I actually stood and looked over the shoulder of the security office and uh, we were able to see all 17 rooms are very productive, very active, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like there's any spare room to do anything else here except grow cannabis. No, and the beauty is this is the first of a whole class of Sky Class facilities, right? So we have tested uh, all the technologies here. Uh, the next in the Sky Class facilities will be Aurora Sun in Medicine Hat, Canada's sunniest city. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will be more advanced than Aurora Sky. It'll also be 50% larger, so 1.2 million square feet, producing 150,000 kilograms of high quality cannabis per year. Wow. And, and so each time we build one of these Sky Class facilities, we take everything that we learned in the previous one, we apply it, and then we add additional technology. And for Aurora Sky itself, uh, we actually added about $15 million of additional technology to the facility while we were building it. Okay. Very cool. And uh, the other uh, thing that I heard a lot of people suggesting is that the, uh, the, the, the fact that you're in Edmonton mm -hmm. and way up north yeah. and where it gets dark earlier in the winter is going to impact your economics so negatively that you'll never make money. So we could drop uh, one of these sky class facilities into uh, an equatorial region. We could drop it into uh, Scandinavia and oh, 
By the way, we are actually dropping one into Scandinavia. Mm. We're building another Sky Class facility, Aurora Nordic, in Odense, Denmark. Birsch de Birsch de Birsch. <laughs> okay, I, I think <laughs> some, I spoke Nordic, some eh? Scandinavian people are going to show up at your door and beat the shit out of you. Ah, no, they like, they love it, they love it. <laughs> they love it when I do bad accents. So, uh, what, what we like about this is, um, first of all, it's exciting to invent this brand new technology, mm -hmm. um, but we think that we're creating the future of cannabis cultivation. Uh, it's part of uh, why we brought Thomas Larson on board. It's part of why we are uh, so heavily into integrating technology into everything we do, from the cultivation itself to the harvest. Um, you know, earlier uh, we showed you uh, one of the uh, robotic cranes that we use uh, to pick up entire tables uh, of cannabis and, and bring them uh, into the central corridor where they move on a conveyor to the harvest areas. Um, that's, that's the way we do things. We want to bring as much efficiency to uh, this process as possible and one measure of that is at our first production facility Aurora Mountain uh, an hour north of Calgary uh, which at the time was the first purpose-built cannabis production facility in the world um, we have uh, 125 people working there that's a 55,000 square foot facility Aurora Sky is 20 times the size in terms of production, 17 times the size uh, um, you know, physically, and we only have 400 people working here. Mm. If you were to try and um, uh, hire uh, the number of people required to harvest uh, a facility of this size uh, in a traditional greenhouse, you'd be looking at well over 1,000 people required, maybe 1,500. Um, so that's our fetish, if you like, to sure. take cannabis production and improve every aspect of it. So, you know, if you were to start fresh in producing cannabis and processing cannabis, how would you do it optimally? That's what we're trying to do. Mm. And it's working, and it's working great. Okay, so your whole game plan here is to so automate the entire process. The mm -hmm. exposure to pathogens and as a result of lots of people is eliminated. The high cost of physical labor is reduced drastically. Yeah. And what other efficiencies of scale are you realizing by building such monstrous facilities? Well, uh, let's let's actually go back to one of the things you said. Uh, we've taken people out of the cultivation rooms, out, out of the flower rooms. And if you take a look at the, the way our rooms are set up, there are no walkways. Uh, so that allows us to do a couple of things. One, we reclaim that space as table space or canopy space to actually grow plants. You don't have to have people walking up and down. But the second thing is we remove human beings uh, who are the most common vector uh, for the transmission of contaminants. Mm. We remove them from the equation. Uh, and, and that leads us to even greater production efficiency. Uh, and, and we will continue to advance that as much as possible with continuous improvement. Um, so uh, the, what we're going to do is take this globally. And uh, you know we're already operating in 18 countries uh, worldwide. Uh, we have production uh, uh, facilities in Canada and Europe now, and we're also building a, a mini version of the Sky Class facility for our partner Can Group uh, in Australia. We can put these facilities anywhere in the world, and that is the beauty of them. What we've done is we've created what I think is the model that is most replicable and scalable on a worldwide basis for consistent cannabis production and economic, well, economical cannabis production. So these Sky Class facilities are designed to produce cannabis for well under a dollar per gram. Hmm. So we're already a, a, an efficient and economical producer. This will create a new standard. Sure. So how much cannabis will you produce in 2019. Okay, so that's going to change through the year. So uh, by the beginning of 2019, we think that we'll be on an annual run rate of about 160,000 kilograms per year. But because we're adding capacity through the year, by the end of 2019, uh, that number will be significantly larger. Uh, as we add production from uh, Aurora Sun, for example, in Medicine Hat. Um, so um, it's, it's a bit of a moving target, if you like, but what I can tell you is that by the beginning of 2020, we're targeting having in excess of 500,000 kilograms or 500 million grams of cannabis production per year on okay. an annual run rate. At what point in the future timeline does Cannab uh, Aurora rather become cash flow positive and stop needing to go to the markets to raise capital? Um, well, that's a, those are two different questions. Um, when do we uh, you know, want to stop uh, going to the markets to raise capital versus uh, where we become uh, cash flow positive? We're very, very close to that. And you know, I've, been, I've been thinking in, in my mind that we'd get there right around the end of this year. I think that's still fairly realistic, but we'll know for sure um, by the end of that year, uh, of this year, uh, calendar year, uh, 2018. 
and, and if it's not by the end of this calendar year, then it'll be soon into uh, calendar 2019. We're, we're getting awfully close right now, and we do have to wait and see, uh, you know, what the demand and what sales are like in the consumer system to, you know, to be able to say that with, with high level of confidence. Sure. That's why I'm hedging a little. Okay, so the reason I conflated those two separate issues is yeah. because the question for me is... Want to raise some money for how us? Mu well, <laughs> <laughs> happily, the question for me is how much more money are you going to need to realize your full CapEx plan for, ma for, th for the whole global build-out? So uh, all of our, um, our facilities are funded. That's, that's taken care of. But there are other questions as well, and that is how fast do we want to, um, to expand on a worldwide basis into how many markets and how soon on what timeline. Uh, and so those are some of the things that we're thinking about right now. Uh, we know that we're going to be generating a lot of uh, free cash flow uh, early in 2019. Um, will that be sufficient for all of our needs? It depends on how our strategy evolves. And part of that is in response to the speed at which new uh, medical cannabis markets and ultimately consumer cannabis markets are opening up. One good example of that is the United Kingdom. Nobody was planning on the United Kingdom having a medical cannabis system at the beginning of 2018. Uh, then uh, the stories of a couple of uh, very sick little boys uh, with epilepsy changed that very, very quickly. And now uh, it looks like the United Kingdom will become uh, a, a very important uh, medical cannabis market in a short period of time. We will probably find that the same ethic will apply to a number of other markets uh, that people hadn't been suspecting in the past. And frankly, I think that, uh, that we can help that process by going into those countries, explaining what this system is all about, how legitimate medical cannabis is, and showing them our track record of multiple years of operating in full compliance with Health Canada regulations, and bringing them over here to actually see it with their own eyes. Are you concerned at all about a risk whereby nations overseas want to embrace more of the economic opportunity inherent in cannabis and are going to move to try to squeeze out those pesky Canadians who are now globally dominant. We anticipate that. Um, countries around the world are going to want to participate in the creation of this new industry and the economic benefits, the new investment, the economic uh, development spin-off benefits, uh, the new employment and the innovation. Absolutely. So our answer to that is, first of all, we've got the expertise, we've got the capital, uh, we've got the reputation, the credibility to be able to do it, but we also want to be your domestic producer. So we are going to find ways, uh, whether it be uh, sole ownership, joint venture, partnerships, uh, to be involved in multiple uh, jurisdictions around the world. We're going to be producing cannabis around the world. That's the plan. All right, um, I will uh, list the facilities, uh, uh, hoping not to leave any out, uh, and perhaps one of my colleagues off camera could help me out if I, if I fall down. So um, <laughs> That'll be you, Heather. <laughs> we're, 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 we're on our way to 11 facilities. We've got eight operating right now in Canada and Europe. It started with the mountain facility north of Calgary, Aurora Mountain. Uh, this is Aurora Sky, obviously. Aurora Sun uh, we're constructing in Medicine Hat. That's three in Alberta. Uh, then we have the, um, the Kenamed facility in Saskatoon. Uh, that's all for Saskatchewan. Uh, on to Ontario, uh, we have uh, two operating facilities uh, that used to be Medrelief. We have them in Markham and Bradford. Uh, on to uh, Quebec, we have uh, two facilities there, uh, Aurora V and Aurora O. Uh, in La Chute, uh, Aurora V is in Point Claire on the island of Montreal. Uh, then uh, help me out if I missed any here so far in Canada. Okay, good. And then on to Europe, we're building two facilities in Denmark. Uh, one, uh, in order to, uh, to help us hit the ground running, uh, is a 100,000 square foot uh, retrofitted greenhouse. The big one, of course, is Aurora Nordic, uh, and that's the million square foot sky class facility that we're building in Odense. And I think that captures all of them, with the exception of ICC Labs. Uh, now, ICC uh, in Latin America is um, an acquisition that's underway. We haven't closed it yet, but once we have closed that, there'll be addition, additional capacity uh, in uh, Uruguay and Colombia to add to the Aurora family. You know what, I, I really do need that cheat sheet we've talked about sure. before. <laughs> and if viewers want to go check out our coverage of uh, ICC Labs, back then it was called International Cannabis Corp, and we interviewed the CEO, Guillermo Del Monte. Oh, you enjoy the, saying that, don't you? I do. I love <laughs> That's a speak. great name. <laughs> it is. Anyways, Guillermo's moved on. The new crew is now Aurora, so that, that has great implications for the significance of that. Why? Because Uruguay, due to its geographical positioning, can grow a lot of cannabis outdoors, and in the hemp universe? Uh, cannabis, hemp, we, we're in both businesses uh, in a very, very big way. Uh, both of them are valuable. Both of them will be huge global industries. Uh, we love both plants. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
let's talk a bit about some of your uh, some of the acquisitions that we haven't touched on because to really fully grasp the Aurora sort of matrix mm -hmm. of companies takes a little bit of thought and understanding. But so we saw a press release from uh, the liquor company that you guys acquired 20% of. Alcana, 25. Al Al Alcana. Yep. And they were going to roll out 14 stores and call them Aurora, but they had to change the name to Nova Cannabis. Well, we have to keep the regulators happy. And right. in Alberta, they said, uh, don't call it Aurora, uh, call it something else. So it'll look like Aurora, it'll sound like Aurora, it'll uh, it'll be, you know, we'll be supplying, among other uh, um, uh, companies, we'll be supplying our cannabis products uh, to them, but it'll be called Nova. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they did very well. Alkena did very well. Uh, that management team d deserves a lot of credit. Uh, they ended up of the first 17 licenses in Alberta announced by the AGLC. Um, uh, they got five, and in excellent locations. So they're, they're doing a really, really good job, getting ramped up very quickly. And of course, they have their eye on Ontario as well. Uh, and I have uh, I have full confidence that um, that they're going to do exceedingly well in Ontario. Okay, so just let's uh, let's wrap it up here. What are the mm -hmm. top five value catalysts that investors can watch for in 2019? That are in 2019? Going? Sure. Uh, additional capacity, obviously. Um, uh, new product forms. Remember that, um, and according to the legislation, the Cannabis Act. Um, the new regulations that allow for concentrates and edibles have to be in place by one year post legalization. That doesn't mean that it will be one year post legalization. So I think that we're going to see some new product forms permitted under regulation from Health Canada. Perhaps things like vape pens, which are a major segment of the market in the Canadian grain market and in the uh, states that have legalized uh, cannabis for consumer use. I think we'll see things like vape pens come onto the market uh, earlier in 2019. And that'll be huge. You know, you, if you've seen those vape pens, <laughs> I, I know you have. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen, I just don't they're, just look at them. I mean, I've tried them. <laughs> well, so they, they, they operate well depending yeah. on the technology. Right. Uh, and they're very discreet. Uh, you can stick them in your pocket, your purse. Um, you know, they make nothing but vapor. Uh, it's an additional uh, segment to the market that we anticipate being in. As, and, and all of these additional segments uh, will be rolling out over the course of 2019. So more production, new product forms, uh, new markets opening up. For, for us, that's a big one because we are uh, present uh, in Europe in a very big way. Uh, a week and a half ago, our senior management team from Canada, uh, we huddled with our European management team in Berlin for a weekend. Uh, and uh, we are very excited about what's happening there. Additional markets cascading open. We've got a very, very talented team over there. Okay. And, and I think we're going to keep killing it in Europe, where I think at the moment it's fair to say that we're the market leader. Okay, quick question from mm -hmm. a viewer. Um, are you, is Aurora planning to go into the uh, performance beverages space? Infused beverages. Infused beverages. Absolutely. We've indicated that some time ago that we do it. We intend on, on being in every single segment uh, of the market. Okay, second part of that question. Uh, how do you deal with the, the idea that cannabinoids are unstable in the presence of fats and acids in foodstuffs and beverages? There are technologies available uh, that, that uh, allow uh, cannabis, or sorry, the cannabinoids to be extracted and uh, stay in solution in the beverages. And in addition, uh, importantly as well, to have rapid onset of action so you're not waiting an hour or two, uh, which is typically the case when you ingest cannabis, uh, and then also a shorter duration of action, which makes it more competitive with a beer or a glass of wine. Aurora has that already taken care of. I have said all I want to say today <laughs> <Okay>. about that. <laughs> all right. Remember, we don't talk about business development until it's fully right. baked. I tried to put him on the spot. <laughs> Damn. Boiled again. Anyways, Cam's going to be back repeatedly throughout 2018 and 19, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.